My name is Roy Burelin, and I am the Vice President of Business Development and Strategic Initiatives for E2IP Technologies. Today is the beginning of a series of podcasts that we'll be uh, publishing in the coming months uh, on various topics within printed electronics. Uh, today's topic will be in mold electronics and uh, uh, some innovations, some thoughts, and uh, hopefully some answer some questions that may be, uh, that may be out there. Um, I'll be joined today by two industry uh, veterans, um, Stefan Gajet, who's the CEO and founder of SunNano, and uh, John Yant, who is a partner at SunNano. Gentlemen, welcome. Um, first, I'd really like to go to John and ask his opinion. Um, uh, IME has met with a lot of, um, I'll call them fits and starts over the years. Um, I've certainly been engaged with the technology in, in, uh, in a lot of different commercial aspects uh, for the past, I'd say, five to seven years. And uh, the markets, um, somewhat, some appear obvious in terms of adoption, um, but others a little bit more, um, perhaps even a little bit more pressing um, in the coming year or two. So, so John, your opinion on, on the markets for IME? Absolutely, Roy. Thank you. And, and thanks for inviting us to participate. I'm really excited to be a part of this series. Um, you know, I think you you touched on an important point with regard to the fits and starts of, of in-mold electronics in, in various applications. I think the big difference we're seeing now is uh, the acceptance in the marketplace and the, the comfort of this technology has now caught up to the capabilities of the technology to a certain degree. And I think certainly the excitement over the next generation for in-mold electronics right now is justified as a technology whose time has come. It, it's my sense or my feeling that some of the most exciting end use markets for in mold electronics today have got to be in either automotive or aerospace. And I, and I say that because of its ability to seamlessly combine with in mold decorating, um, make a very lightweight product with a small footprint interface and the capability to be used with in mold decorating makes it a really easy decision for the rapidly expanding markets in hybrid vehicle and e-vehicle, where keeping the weight and space to a minimum is crucial for vehicle efficiency. Uh, I also think it helps when you're blending these well with the aesthetics that consumers today have really become, you know, expecting in some of the products that they see, whether it's in the vehicles or in things like aerospace cabins, for example. You see a really creative push coming toward how the passenger interface is gonna is gonna be integrated into the seating area. And I think having lightweight, low space taking technologies that provide that human machine interface with a, a very unique design aesthetic, but also adding to the efficiency and functionality really make for an ideal end use application in in-mold electronics. I think your points are, uh, are valid and well taken. And I think your mention of aerospace um, really uh, speaks to the heart and soul of, of you know, kind of thinking outside the box a bit. Um, as you point out, automotive and perhaps even appliance are such logical spaces for uh, the adoption of in-mold electronics and the advantages it brings as a technology. But you talk about lightweight in particular in aerospace, and certainly that's an area that E2IP is, is also focused on. I also think that that you mentioned something else that's, that's really um, beginning to challenge the industry a bit in terms of you know, the validation of high speed, um, you know, high volume production in IME and, and various reports around the world of um, who's, who's done what and who can do what. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we're all dissatisfied in the industry in terms of how far and how fast it's come along from a truly valid commercial standpoint. So, so you mentioned um, IMD and uh, it's, I find that interesting because part of the initiative that, that we're take, we've undertaken at E2IP is um, the development of, of, of processes and material sets that really broaden um, the, if you will, the, the use of, of, of different options for producing IME devices. And IMD plays an important role in that. Um, in fact, we've taken it one step further. We've, we've decided that these expanded um, processes and material sets um, uh, we, we've, we've actually branded branded what we what we refer to as is IME two or the second generation of IME, and uh, I, I won't bore everyone with that in this particular segment, but certainly something we'll talk about in the future. Um, I would like to address something though with, with Stefan, uh, based on his experience with advanced materials. I think uh, he could deal with this question very well. You know, the issue of of, of uh, conductor systems and printable conductors 
Um, you know, we've, we've at E2IP are driving um, part of our initiative around advanced technologies and material sets, um, one of which is our molecular ink, uh, conductive ink. Um, but from that perspective, I'd be interested in Stefan's um, thoughts around, um, for example, nanomaterials and how they compare with more conventional, if you will, uh, flake silvers. Thank you, um, Roy. The, the key point in answering your question first is, is to really well understand uh, what is IME. Uh, IME is a process that consists in, in several steps into which very different material are gonna be stacked on each other's, making like a multi-layer product. Uh, the first part is, is made on a 2D dimension. It's uh, taking the, the base material, the substrate, which is gonna be usually uh, a polypropylene uh, with a protective uh, surface finish, a transparent polypropylene on which are, is going to be printed the, the graphic part. The graphic ink is first printed, then you have to add on that uh, multi-layer product the functional inks, such as the conductive ink, the dielectric overcoats, adhesives, etc. And this overall stack has to be designed to make the functionality of, of the final electronic product. Uh, the whole stack is then cured at a regular temperature around 100, 120 degrees C. And the second part then, we are still in a 2D dimension here, is to dispense the, the conductive adhesives and uh, add all the components on a, on a pick and place system. Uh, there is another curing if necessary for the adhesives and another phase of testing, because on each of those phases, testing has to be made, make sure the conductivity and the whole electronic uh, processing is working perfectly. The third part uh, stage of the process is, is going into 3D. Then this whole product has to be thermoformed uh, in, a, in a vacuum uh, thermoforming system, usually at 150, 170 degrees C, using vacuum or high air pressure. And uh, there is another testing phase. Uh, fourth stage of the process is, is a die cut process where you're gonna cut the, the shape of the part. And finally, you have the injection molding phase where you're gonna stack the whole, do the whole stack all together. And that is done under a high uh, pressure and pretty high temperature around 275 degrees C, 300 degrees C. And uh, the final product has to function after all these processes. So the key point for, for manufacturing uh, IME is to make sure from a material standpoint that all those materials are compatible with, it, with each other. You're making a multi-layer process, they have to, to, to be compatible with each other. Uh, compatibility with the decorative ink and the dielectric ink from the conductive part. Uh, the whole product has to remain conductive after thermoforming and resist to high pressure and high temperature injection molding. So those are the key points. Okay. Regarding the conductive ink you were mentioning, the, the advantage of the nano ink, we believe, uh, versus the regular silver flakes, is that the nano ink are leaving less uh, visual effect on the, on the graphic parts. The, especially in the car industry, the aesthetics is very important. And there has been several uh, projects where there was what was called by the, the in-mold producer or the car manufacturer, a see-through issue that uh, the current conductive paste they were using were creating a visible track on the, on the gloss part of the part. And that's completely banned by the OEMs. So the, the material compatibility management is key. Make sure all the products are compatible with each other and make sure that the layers are as thin as possible so you don't have aesthetics issues. You make very good points there, uh, Stefan. I think um, the issue of, of telegraphing, as, as we would have called it in the, uh, the ink industry, um, is, is very important. And I, I could see advantages in, in nanotechnologies and other technologies like molecular ink to address that. I also see um, some opportunities with these uh, advanced metallization such as nano or, or molecular ink to 
really help with uh, increasing the density of, of the circuitry since they are such fine line and they can be applied via um, methods which really lend themselves better to, uh, uh, to fine line. Um, so, so I suspect that, that the, uh, um, the stack of materials, is, as you point out, uh, as complex as that can be, uh, you know, different systems, UV systems, solvent systems, water systems, et cetera, all have to come find a way to work together in a process. And, and I, you know, I, I've felt for a long time that, that like material sets um, or each I need to design, um, processing is a, um, well, it's a dynamic and it's a, it's a, it's a fluid um, uh, process, manufacturing process that needs to be adapted step by step. It's one of the reasons E2IP has is, is, is adopted the, the, the phrase, if you will, or slogan from ideation to fabrication. Um, history has proved, I think, that a lot of the, as I indicated earlier, these false starts or fits and starts of IME designs, uh, really uh, many of the problems that were developed or, or, or discovered towards the end um, really could have been addressed if, if the true um, analysis of material sets, compatibility and so forth uh, were addressed early on. And, and that really leads me to, to my last question um, to both of you, and, and maybe John, you wanna take a stab at this. Um, what I've learned from both of you um, working with you previously for many years uh, in terms of you know your expertise and experience in in uh, developing material sets and launching commercial efforts, um, you know we were always and together right, we were always on the uh, on the materials end of things, which is very difficult to start a process and start a, a you know a, a, an initiative, if you will, you know. But today um, we're you know I, I'm working with work, working for E2IP and. And I'm concerned with all aspects of, of the process. You two gentlemen have taken up something extremely interesting in my mind uh, with Sun Nano, and that is the, the access uh, that you're gaining to the advanced materials uh, around the world with respect to suppliers uh, for everything from adhesives through to you know, decorative and conductive materials. So if you could speak a little bit about how you're, how you're dealing with that and, and the complexities of multiple supply chains, if you will, and yeah. multiple vendors, that would be, uh, I think, yeah. the audience would find that very helpful. I, I think your question, Roy, really is um, is the perfect lead-in to one of the most um, confounding issues that you and I, I think, have experienced in the past and that uh, the industry as a whole experiences, which is um, the need for a streamlined and cohesive kind of manufacturing process that's integrated to what the end market really needs and how best to bring that. You know, as, as a, an ink manufacturer or as a, a raw materials manufacturer that supplies into that space, you certainly have an interest in promoting the capabilities of your own technology. If you're a converter or a printer, you wanna take those materials, bring added value to them by the kind of device you can create that brings maybe a unique um, advantage to your own capabilities and then provides your customer with what they're trying to give to the OEM. So there's at least four people in this supply chain. And I think the one thing that's incumbent upon us in our role at, at Sun Nano is, is we can be a conduit for helping bring all these different technologies together and helping to unify to what the end goal or the end market, in this case, the OEMs might want to have. And I, I think it's important because at the end of the day, the OEM doesn't really care whose conductive ink is in there, who's printed the part successfully and made something that works for in mold decorating or capacitive touch. And they're not really that concerned with how it's being built by their tier one supplier, as long as what they get works. As a partner and as a company that can help bring all these things together, we can work closely with the OEM, integrate this whole seamless supply chain so that we're feeding up to the end market needs of what these OEMs and ODMs are looking for to make sure that everybody's on board with the build of materials, the cost, the processing, so that they fit in seamlessly with what the market wants. And then really driving this from the top down, generating an excitement about these technologies, selling it and promoting it to the end market, and then helping bring the right partners together to bring that solution to the market. John, I think that's an excellent explanation. Um, and and it, it is a complex, um, it's a complex world we live in, right? And and uh, we all know, uh, Stefan, yourself and, and myself, we're, 
we've experienced the fact that you, you can you can uh, interest an OEM in a new technology. Um, you can drive that technology through to uh, an approval, perhaps in Chicago or in Paris. Um, but it's 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 very very likely that that product's going to be produced elsewhere. So to be able to manage that whole, um, uh, if you will, that whole choreography of uh, of material sets, combinations of processes, and multiple manufacturing sites, really speaks to um, the need for a process like in mold electronics uh, to be as robust and simplified as possible. Absolutely. So gentlemen, I just, I, I think we've come to the end of our first session and uh, I want to thank you both very, very much. This has been uh, extraordinarily helpful and, and, uh, and I think uh, insightful for the audience. Um, and to the audience, you know, I'd like to encourage you to reach out to us uh, with any questions or feedback. Um, as I said, we hope to be doing one of these every four to six weeks um, on various topics. So again, feel, feel free to uh, suggest topics, uh, ask questions of, of myself, John, and, uh, and I think, uh, you know, maybe together um, we could advance these technologies uh, to what I like to refer to as uh, robust and widespread commercialization. Thank you very much for listening.